Hello students, in this video we're going to talk about lipids. So lipids are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, just like carbohydrates, but the ratio of those three elements are different, and how those three elements are bonded are also different. So the main components of lipids are glycerol and fatty acids. So each lipid is made up of usually a glycerol, which is its own unit, and three fatty acids sometimes. They can all bond together and form one lipid. So this is called a fatty acid tail. But sometimes you can also have just one little head, uh, not even a, gl a, a glycerol, but then was also a phosphate group with two fatty acids. So sometimes lipids can have a phosphorus element in it, but it's not always there. Lastly, we have another type of lipid that is a steroid. So what you see over here, three examples of lipid. We have triglycerols or triglyceride. Uh, they're made up of three fatty acid tails and one glycerol, okay? This is what makes up a fat or oil. On the right side, we have butter and olive oil. In the middle, we have something called phospholipid. So this is what makes up of the phospholipid bilayer of the cell membrane. So it's the com main component of the cell membrane. It is made up of a glycerol, phosphate, and two fatty acids. The really special thing about a phospholipid is that the head part, because it has a phosphorus, it has a negative charge, right? So it's, it's polar, or it's actually charged. So we, we say that is hydrophilic. Those are hydrophilic heads. And then we have the hydrophobic tails because the long hydrocarbon fatty acids are nonpolar. And then we have steroids. So the steroids uh, can be find, found at all different kinds of places, and we'll talk about that a little bit as well. But one place that you can find it, again, is, is the cell membrane. But it, steroids can also be hormones. You've probably heard about people using steroids, right? Steroid hormone. So moving on, this picture shows you again, we have glycerol right here. Each glycerol has an OH group uh, on it attached. And then the fatty acid all have an OH group as well. So in order for you to go from glycerol and fatty acids to a triglyceride molecule, kind of a macromolecule, a little bit bigger of a molecule, then you want to go through this condensation reaction or um, the dehydration reaction where waters are being released. So over here, three waters are being released in order to form this triglyceride. This, these bonds that are formed in between the glycerol and the fatty acids are also covalent bonds. So fatty acids are the fatty acid tails, right? So on the last page, these three things over here are all fatty acids. So fatty acids have they're all hydrophobic because they're hydrocarbons and the carbon and hydrogen's electronegativity are pretty similar, so they share the electrons pretty equally. But there's a difference between a saturated fatty acid and an unsaturated fatty acid. So a saturated fatty acid, as you can see on this picture, are when you have carbons bonded together only using single bonds. So every bond in between each of the carbons in the fatty acid tails those are all single bonds. So the result of this is that single bonds is just a chain, right? So no, your saturated fatty acid ha is called saturated because for every carbon, you have as many hydrogen attached to it as, as you can possibly have, right? Each carbon has four bonds. These are how many hydrogens you can stock on there uh, in total of most, right? So another thing about a, a saturated fatty acid is because it's a straight chain, which means they can be packed tightly together, right? So if you think about a straight line, another straight line, and another straight line, they can all be packed very tightly because they're all straight lines, right? So if you have a type of fat or lipid that is contained of mostly saturated fatty acid, the result of it is that it's going to be solid at room temperature because it's easier, it's easier to pack them together, okay? Another example of that could be cheese or it could be butter. At room temperature, it's usually a solid, right? Wait, is butter, is, is butter solid at room temperature? I think it is, right? It's usually, it usually is. And then, in comparison, we have something called unsaturated fatty acids. So unsaturated fatty acids are called unsaturated because the carbons aren't taking in as many hydrogens as possible. So as you can see over here, these two carbons are bonded together with a double bond, right? So potentially, the carbon can have two hydrogens attached to it, but now we can only have one because one of the bonds is taken away by this double bond over here. So 
An unsaturated fat, saturated fatty acid causes something called a kink. So instead of a straight chain of hydrocarbon, you would have a kind of a bent shape. Every time you have a double bonded carbon, you have a little bend. If you have another one, it bends again. Okay. So the result of this is that because of these bending, right? If you think about two bending lines, you can't pack them as tightly because they're kind of kicking each other, right? You've had people with their arms all uh, extended, they can't get very close um, to each other. So that's kind of like heart, the un unsaturated fatty acid. So the result of having more unsaturated fatty acid in a type of lipid is that it will become liquid at room temperature because it's hard to pack them together, okay? So here's the thing. When you think about cells, cells exist at all different kinds of temperatures, right? We have cells, we have animals living in really hot temperature, we have animals living in really cold temperature. We have plants living in all kinds of temperature as well. So there's something that we need to consider is called membrane fluidity. How fluid is the cell membrane? If we have cells being used at places that are really, really hot, then you want more of the unsat, uh, you want more of the saturated fatty acid because you don't want the cells to fall apart, right? If you have more the, being at high temperature already make things more liquidy, but if you have even more unsaturated fatty acid, the cell will easily fall apart, right? In comparison, if you have fish living in uh, cold water, for example, then it will have more of the unsaturated fatty acid because it, it, at cold temperature, things become solid more easily. So you want more liquid. You want your cell membrane to not become too solid. So you'll have more unsaturated fatty acid in the cell membrane as a result. Uh, another example of unsaturated fatty acid is trans fat. Moving on. Sorry about that. Um, functions of fat. We have long-term storage of energy, insulation, right? You know polar bears have a lot of fat and they're totally fine the way they are, right? They're used in cell membrane as well. Uh, there's a specific type of cell in our body that stores fat. Is called the adipose cell. Moving on. Now we have phospholipids. So phospholipids have one head and two tails. So we have the hydrophobic head and the hydrophilic tails, or the polar head and the nonpolar tails. Okay. So the result of this is that the outside of the cell is liquid. The inside of the cell is liquid. So you want the heads to be facing the outside and towards the inside. That is also why cells have to have a phospholipid bilayer because if you only have one layer, then the cell, the cell membrane can't deal with it, right? Because it's liquid on both sides. And the tails, the fatty acid tails, really would like to not be around the liquid. So we call a molecule like this amphipathic, right here, which means it has a hydrophobic end and a hydrophilic end. Another example of this type of molecule uh, are soap. So soap can interact with fat. The reason why it can wash off fat is because it has a hydrophilic side that can interact with the water that you're using to wash the soap off of the place, but it also has a hydrophobic side that can interact with the fat itself. And then this is cell membrane as well. I'm at 4%. Let's see, let's see how far we can get. Okay. Next page. Next page is called steroids. So steroids are also used inside the cell membrane, but they're also used in hormones. I specifically want to talk a little bit more about uh, cholesterol. So cholesterol is a type of steroid that is incorporated in the animal cell membrane. And this is really good because the steroids are kind of like this little picture over here. It's like, no, don't leave me. So what I'm saying is that uh, cholesterol holds the cell membrane together when it's falling apart. Okay. So for example, if we have uh, the cell being in a hotter temperature than normal, the cell membrane will fall apart more easily, right? But you don't want your cell membrane to fall apart. That ruins everything. So what do you do? You have cholesterol inside the cell membrane, kind of holding on to two sides of these uh, fatty acid tails to prevent the cell membrane from falling apart. Okay, so that's what happens in a higher temperature. Opposite to that, if we were to have a lower temperature, right? If you think about ocean water fish that li live in really cold water, their cell membrane's challenge is that it might become too solid, right? Because it's too cold. Molecules slow down. So what do we do? We have these cholesterol kind of as, as mediators. They're stuck in there. They're kind of oddly shaped, 
So now the result is your cell membrane, um, those phospholipids in the cell membrane cannot be packed too tightly together so that your cell membrane does not become a solid, which is great. We do, we do not want that, right? So this is what uh, is said over here. Cholesterol reduces membrane fluidity, um, and then, but it also increases membrane fluid, fluidity by uh, preventing the cell membrane from getting too solid, all right? Uh, but however, you might also know higher level of cholesterol in your body could cause cast, uh, cardiovascular di disease. So you can probably eat a lot of hot fried chicken right now, but probably not too much in the future. Okay, as a summary, things that influence membrane fluid fluidity. This is really important because this is biology. Ultimately, we got to talk about what happens inside our body, right? So we have the amount of saturated fatty acid and unsaturated fatty acid. Again, if you have more saturated fatty acid, it will increase. Uh, you will decrease membrane fluidity. Your membrane will become more solid more easily. Unsaturated fatty acid increases membrane fluidity, as you can see in the picture on the right side. Right, this, these are your unsaturated fatty acid. They can't pack together as easily. Temperature, cold temperature, decrease membrane fl fluidity. Hot temperature increases membrane fluidity. The amount of cholesterol. So the more cholesterol you have, uh, your membrane fluidity will just be at the right amount. Right. If you have a lot of cholesterol, the membrane fluidity will probably increase as well. All right. Anything else? All right. Here is our CED. So let's take a look. Do we cover everything? We have difference in saturation, right? We talk about saturated, unsaturated. We talk about phospholipid. It has a nonpolar region, right? They face each other away from water. And then we have the polar region, the hydrophilic head, which faces the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell. Together, they form your phospholipid bilayer. I hope this helps.